in that big hairball was a whole family of fleas. For those of you who got snarky about that, yeah, you're missing the boat, folks. Do we want to kill the adults? Oh, heck yes. Kind of cool science, really. We do know for a fact that animals that have a good immune system are less likely to be parasitized. We want to talk about fleas. The big thing with fleas is that they have four stages to their life cycle. Egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Unfortunately, what ends up happening is we get so hyper-focused on the fact that there's fleas on the dog or fleas on the cat. And we're like, oh my gosh, put something on the cat, put something on the dog, treat, treat the dog. Yeah, you're missing the boat, folks. The adult spending time on your pet is 5% of the life cycle. Five. So let's do the math. 95% of the life cycle is not on your dog and cat. We're missing the boat. And this is why giving chemicals orally to your dog or cat is missing the boat. This is why applying chemicals topically on your dog and cat is missing the boat. You're treating 5% of the life cycle. So stop it. <laughs> let's love my rant. Keep it coming. So why don't we focus on all the other parts of the life cycle besides the adult? Yeah, there's some eggs on your dog and cat too. We want to treat the environment and we want to treat all the life stages. We don't want to just be so hyper-focused on the adult. Do we want to kill the adults? Oh, heck yes. Because one little female adult flea can lay 2,000 eggs in two weeks. That's a lot. That's a very busy little mama making lots of little baby fleas. Well, flea eggs anyway. One of the things that has been used in the past is um, Lufeneron prevents flea eggs from hatching. So that's part of what is in Sentinel. Do I recommend it? Well, not really. But at least with that, we're treating two parts of the life cycle if we're doing something on the pet and then also preventing eggs from hatching. Not ideal, but if your Sentinel contains milbamycin, which is the heartworm preventative that's in Interceptor, I like milbamycin better than anything else. We'll talk about that more when we talk about heartworm. But Sentinel has milbamycin and lufeneron, and that lufeneron, the reason it prevents flea problems and flea infestations is because it prevents the eggs from hatching. It prevents the little tooth on the end of the little baby flea inside the egg from developing so it can't chip its way out of the egg. Kind of cool science, really. That is something to consider if you're in an area where you absolutely have to give heartworm preventative and you absolutely have a flea issue that you haven't been able to break the cycle. I do recommend using natural products whenever possible. With that said, I want to talk about the nematodes, the flea destroyer. So what the heck is a nematode and how does it stop us from having a flea problem? So this is one of the ways you can treat the environment. This box has 10 million microscopic beneficial nematodes. They naturally live in soil, bark, and ground litter, and they travel through the soil and penetrate the flea larva. So we're getting one of those middle stages of the flea life cycle. They kill the larva before the fleas grow up to bite. They're the only way to proactively deal with fleas introduced by squirrels and mice and bunnies who like to live in your yard. They're safe for people, pets, and plants, and they're harmless to beneficial insects, such as ladybugs, lacewings, and praying mantis, as well as earthworms. So we keep the good guys alive, but we're killing off the guys that we don't want. The way they work is they release bacteria into the flea larva after they penetrate it, and the bacteria kill the flea, or the flea larva. So how cool is that? It actually works um, for the immature stages for ticks too. Gwen did her yard literally in a few minutes yesterday. So and we have video of that. Do they kill caterpillars? Not that I know of, but it says ladybugs, lacewings, praying mantis, and earthworms, they're harmless as beneficial insects. That's one way we can treat the environment. Other things we can use in the environment, we can use food grade diatomaceous earth. So you could spread diatomaceous earth on your yard. If you put nematodes down, don't put diatomaceous earth down because diatomaceous earth is going to make these guys not do so well either. So it's one or the other because these are live organisms. By the way, if you get a box and you don't use it right away, keep it in the refrigerator. They last a lot longer in the refrigerator. They're stored in the refrigerator here. They're stored in the refrigerator before we get them. They'll last about a year 
if they're stored in the refrigerator. So that's one of the ways to treat the environment. We can use nematodes. We can use diatomaceous earth. We can use essential oil sprays in the environment. There are a lot of different products on the market. There are companies that make products that you can hook up to your hose and use them just like you would use a like a fertilizing your garden with a product that basically dilutes it as it's spraying through the hose and you can spray your yard with essential oils. My sister gets her yard sprayed with cedar oil during tick season. She doesn't have a flea problem so much, but during tick season. So that's another way that you could treat the environment. And if you live in, you know, you have a huge area, let's say your animals are on three acres and you don't want to treat three acres, at least treat about a 50 foot, 50 to 100 foot kind of circle around your house to keep things kind of at bay. And that will help a little bit so that you're not tracking things in from, from up close to the house. We've got the environment taken care of. We're using powder, we're using nematodes, we're using sprays, whatever it is that makes you comfortable. I actually use the Buck Mountain Parasite Dust, which is neem, yarrow, and diatomaceous earths. It is made for use on your pets. I do use it on my farm animals for their lice, but I use it in my windowsills because it keeps flies from laying eggs and hatching in my windowsills, which we live on a farm. Summertime, I like to have the windows open and that kind of happens. So you can use that in the environment as well. And you don't need a lot of that. Think about areas where the fleas like to hide out. We got a flea infestation in our house in New Jersey. We had no carpet really. And we just couldn't get rid of the fleas. And it was when Gwen got little baby Edward kitten and she brought him to our house for Thanksgiving and he brought friends, way too many friends. And he left his friends at our house at the time. I think we had 10 dogs and five cats. So really didn't want the friends, but I vacuumed. I washed all the bedding in the hottest water I could. I bathed every single one of those animals. I sprayed those animals using all natural products. And I thought, yay. A week later, I went, not yay. Did it all again. Yay. A week later, not yay. And I thought, I cannot keep doing this. And, you know, my mind is going to, oh my gosh, if I have to use a chemical, what chemical do I want to use? But what it ended up being is I had not treated the environment effectively enough. Because when the cleaning person came that week, I asked her to help me move all the furniture. I thought I had done a good job getting under it. But no, there was one lazy boy recliner that when we tipped it forward underneath, there was this huge hairball of shed hair from our dogs and cats. And in that big hairball was a whole family of fleas. And I'm talking a big family. We vacuumed that up, got rid of it. I did my whole thing again. And that was the end of the problem. No chemicals. We got rid of the problem. But I hadn't found the source. If you're having trouble, one, make sure you're treating for all life cycles and really cleaning that environment. And two, try to find that source of where they're coming from. I personally think Gwen's house is up on metal girders because it's a prefab. <laughs> I think that her problem is actually in the crawl space under her house, but nobody really wants to go in there again to, to spray the nematodes. But that's if, if the lawn doesn't do it, then we're going to have to get under there and spray under there. So to treat your pets, what are you going to do with your pets? Because we want to get rid of any of those little mama fleas that are crawling around on the dogs and cats because each one of them might lay 2000 eggs. And you can see how it gets out of control so quickly. It's like, you know, little Edward might have brought five fleas with him. He brought more. But he might have only brought five, but that would be 10,000 eggs. And then they hatch. And then a couple of weeks later, I've got all these little babies. And then the babies grow up very quickly. And you can see how it gets out of control really fast. That's why you want to stay on top of things. Flea comb, your best friend. Flea comb, flea comb, flea comb. Every day. Vacuum. A lot. So every day, and if you have a um, vacuum with a bag, get rid of the bag. But you could potentially vacuum up something like um, the Buck Mountain Parasite Dust, and that could be in there with your vacuum bag. If you have a bag and you don't want to have to throw it out every time you vacuum. If you have a canister vac, take it and dump it outside in an enclosed bag container or something so that anybody you vacuumed up is not staying in your house. Topically, you know I'm a huge fan of essential oils. So whether you're shampooing, I'm a huge fan of um, Project Suds. And no, this is not a sales pitch for those of you who got snarky about that. I'm just telling you options. I don't care which product you use, which one's your favorite, where you get it from. It doesn't matter. I'm just letting you know there's options. So don't be snarky. <laughs> and then essential oil sprays as well. I love Kin and Kind. This is the Project Suds one. So we've got to treat the environment inside and outside. And we can treat our pets topically. But if you're really having an issue, then go for something internal as well. So you can feed fresh garlic. We've got dosages for that 
in all of our social media stuff. And it's also in the book. Yeah, I, I know I'm just selling things. Um, but you can also do feed throughs. We, uh, Wolf Creek is one bug off is another one, but they have things like neem. Um, some of them have diatomaceous earth. So whatever's your favorite to use, fleas are definitely something that we're going to get exposed to. I've had multiple flea infestations in my household over the years. Cause I've always had a lot of pets. I've always had a lot. Well, for a long time, I only had one dog and I said, I would only have one dog. And then we got up to 13 and now we're down to four. So, hmm. And then cats, I've had as little as one, and I've had as many as, what do we have now? Well, 13, I think, was the highest. So when you have that many animals, and they're, we have always lived in farmland, we're going to get exposed to fleas, ticks, whatever. Ever since I've known about the dangers of chemicals, which has been about the past 12 to 15 years, I haven't used the chemicals. I have stuck with essential oils and diatomaceous earth and flea combs and vacuuming and you know all the things that i talk about all the time and i haven't had problems like when we get fleas we get rid of them very quickly i know where to look for them i know where they live and they don't like actually to live in the middle of the sunny bright part of your yard they're going to be more in the shady areas. They're going to be where there's litter on the ground, you know, dead leaves that just kind of like the ticks. They need some moisture and humidity in order for their life cycle to keep going. So when it's really, really hot and dry, if you live in a hot, dry, deserty area, probably not going to have a huge issue. We do know for a fact that animals that have a good immune system are less likely to be parasitized. You're less likely to have infestation if they're on a good whole food diet and if they're not over vaccinated and if their microbiome isn't destroyed by chemicals and drugs. Just a pitch for, hey, naturally raised pets have a lot less problems. So we'll talk about that more when we talk about intestinal parasites and mange and all those other fun things that we're going to talk about. Ah, diatomaceous earth used around the house outside and windowsills kills termites. Good to no, can't thank you enough for all the product suggestions that I'm not selling <laughs> and you're giving away all this information for free. Well, thank you, Jerry. <laughs> I can always count on my peeps to come to my rescue and defend me.